wasn't gonna do anything. There have been many devious people featured on To Catch a Predator, but one individual is seen as the poster child of the show and synonymous with the show itself. His name is Vincent Ambrosio, also known as the Undertaker Predator. It wasn't Vincent messages that earned him that role, but rather for his appearance and demeanor when he was finally confronted by Chris Hansen. Vincent sported a cowboy hat, was noticeably overweight, and seemed very self-conscious when speaking to the decoy. While this wouldn't separate him very much from the other predators, what made him the most memorable predator was the pathetic breakdown he had while being questioned by Hansen in an attempt to garner sympathy. Vincent Ambrosio crying in tears of joy after Chris Hansen suggests he becomes a Reddit mod instead of a cop. I'm sad. I can't do anything. Look at where I, where I dress and stuff. Nobody, everybody thinks I'm weird. Before we continue, make sure to leave a like for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe if you want us to update you on the current whereabouts of other people featured on To Catch a Predator. Thanks. Before Vincent walked through the door that would change his life forever, here are some of the things he wrote to the 12-year-old decoy. Vincent started the chat with asking the 12-year-old girl about her age and about her grade in school. Vincent started the chat with a greeting message, Hey! The 12-year-old girl responded, Hey, sorry I went to sleep last night. Vincent replied back with a reply, That's okay, how'd you sleep? The 12-year-old girl then replied that it was a tough day, but Friday was better. Vincent asked, How old are you? The girl replied, 12, and you? Then Vincent replied, 19. What grade are you in? The girl replied, seventh. Then Vincent asked, could I see a pic of you? After writing those messages, Vincent drove over 50 miles to meet who he thought was a 12-year-old girl. Fairfield, Connecticut police collaborated with former NBC News reporter Chris Hansen from To Catch a Predator in an undercover sting to apprehend suspected online predators and made 10 arrests. 10 suspects were arrested as a result of the Fairfield sting operation. These guys assumed they were communicating with minors via the internet and text messages, but they were actually communicating with Fairfield police and Hansen. The suspects were lured to the Fairfield residence one by one and were met by investigators, Hansen, and a video crew before being arrested. The location of that house is being withheld by police. The men detained range in age from 19 to 64 years old, with the majority hailing from Connecticut. The charges range from online enticement of a minor to attempted assault of a minor under 16 years old. According to investigators, the defendant's text communications were alarming and they defended working with Hansen. And I'll leave it to your imagination as to what those items were, but they were certainly inappropriate and illegal and they should not have been exposing those to what they thought were children, McNamara explained. It's terrible what happened, Fairfield resident George Gallagher remarked. I'm surprised at the number of people who are involved. I'm alarmed and certainly glad they found out and stopped it, another Fairfield resident said. Now back to Vincent Ambrosio. Ambrosio shows up at the Fairfield Stinghouse after driving 65 miles from his home in Wappinger Falls, New York, to meet up with who he thought was a 12-year-old girl. Ambrosio made sexual remarks and shared photographs of his privates. When he walks in, he tries to hug the decoy and complains about how cold it was that day. Hansen enters the room immediately. Ambrosio claims he knew somebody was going to show up, becoming increasingly distraught before telling Hansen his life story and attributing his demise to his long-term melancholy and Adderall misuse. He even stated that one of his nurses proposed shock therapy as a treatment for his depression and that he discussed the notion with his doctor. Ambrosio tells Hansen that despite residing in New York, he enjoys dressing like a cowboy and is well aware that it makes him look odd. Ambrosio grabs a knife from his pocket and tosses it into his hat, which he had set on the table before, much to Hansen's shock. Hansen maintains half-heartedly that he had no pleasure in the interview. Ambrosio was arrested while begging the officers to shoot him and interviewed by local law enforcement. Though he maintains his stern condemnation of Ambrosio's behavior, Hansen adopts a much more solemn and compassionate tone when questioning him. This is to extract the maximum amount of information so that Vincent incriminates himself. It's unclear whether the second girl named Hannah Vincent mentioned was a real 18-year-old girl who backed out when she learnt Jenna Claire was 12, a decoy, or a catfish trolling Vincent. Some fans suspected Hannah was actually Vincent using a fake account since she first seems agreeable to the notion of her and Vincent having a with a child. Although it is not stated in the interview or in his encounter with Hansen, Vincent was compulsive and threatened the decoy with 
numerous times when she refused to talk to him immediately. He also phoned another decoy dressed as a 12-year-old, which Hansen acknowledged when Ambrosio's part originally aired. In 2021, Hansen said on his podcast, Predators I've Caught, that the last time he heard from Vincent, he was in a halfway home, most likely for and or the addiction therapy. Ambrosio's interview is the closest Hansen has ever come to directly telling a suspect that they are about to be arrested, assuring him, there are some people over there who are gonna get you on the next step to get better, okay? This is out of character for Hansen, as he usually never tells predators they are about to get arrested, which some fans have speculated was because of Vincent's age being 19 and him showing remorse. And it was tough. He was obviously depressed. He mentioned, I go from solid questioning journalists to thinking, hey, I've got my own 22 and 25 year old. I've got to handle this differently, Chris Hansen stated. Ambrosio is still on the sex offender registry as of 2023. However, since his release from prison, he's been up to a few things. More on this later. While Vincent was in detention, his father called the decoy and threatened her with legal action until she told him where he was. The only way this was even possible to begin with is because Vincent had not yet communicated to his father that there was never a real 12-year-old girl and that the entire thing was a sting operation. Additionally, the decoy answered in character because the sting was still taking place. Who, who is this? My name is Jenna. Who are you? Is this Jenna? I'm Jenna. Who are you? I'm the police. Okay. Now, on to the court proceedings. Specifically for this video, we have obtained a copy of the actual court transcript. We work super hard on these videos, so a like on the video would be greatly appreciated. The court case starts out with Vincent's lawyer briefly explaining to the judge that Vincent's family had attended the sentencing and used Vincent's mental state as a way to justify his monstrous actions by saying, He's been in and out of psychiatric hospitals. He's had extensive psychiatric treatment, different medication trials, and Dr. Walmer referenced that his that he's developmentally delayed for one, which I think contributed to some of this conduct. Vincent then spoke to the judge directly and had this to say just before he was sentenced. Okay, and I have to ask you this, Mr. Ambrosio, is there anything you'd like to say to me before I actually impose a sentence? I'd just like to apologize for what I did. I know it was wrong and it will never happen again. Okay. I'm not that kind of person. All right, thank you. Ambrosio was sentenced on November 14, 2016. He was prosecuted and convicted of attempting to seduce a minor through a computer, attempted second degree assault of a minor, and possession of and he was sentenced to 30 months in prison on a 10-year suspended sentence. He also had to register as a Ultimately, he was sentenced to 10 years in prison, with a suspension after serving two and a half years, 10 years probation, and having to register as a for 10 years. Vincent served part of his 10-year suspended sentence, but was eventually released back into society on January 29, 2018. According to unverified sources online, people who have claimed to have seen Vincent since his release have updated everyone on his current whereabouts by saying, he works at a shop right where my buddy works at. Everybody there just mocks him relentlessly. When people asked for more details, the Redditor elaborated by saying, he works the night shift so he doesn't have to interact with the customers. According to another individual online, they claim to have found a copy of Vincent's resume, which details that he works as a car detailer at CAP Solutions, as well as a caregiver at Edward Bastone, and doing a part-time job as animal caretaker at Southern Duchess Equestrian. Lastly, he also eventually went back and got his GED, since, if you remember, he claimed he flunked out of high school. What are your thoughts on Vincent? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. And give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to Criminality and click on the bell icon to receive the most recent videos as soon as we post them.